you all and welcome in the last class of sex offenses that is on sexual perversions or paraphilia rather sexual paraphilia the term sexual perversion is an old and obsolete term and it is replaced by the new term sexual paraphilia but before proceeding further there is a sincere statutory warning to you all so after this warning we are entering into the cha chapter sexual paraphilia as i have said the term sexual perversion or sexual deviations these are the older terms used in dsm category 1 and category 2 but replaced by the new term sexual paraphilia on dsm 3 onwards so what does the definition of sexual perversion or sexual deviation mean in those days so as for the definition of sexual perversion is concerned it was defined as these were persistently indulged sexual acts or fantasies that were considered unusual abnormal or deviant within culture and in which complete sexual satisfaction or gratification excitement or even orgasm is obtained even without sexual intercourse this phrase is important even without sexual intercourse tar mane in those acts of sexual deviation sexual intercourse was never an integral part of the act there may be sexual intercourse but not always even in those cases or these acts which are persistently indulged sexual acts or fantasies but these acts are considered abnormal within the culture or the society where the sexual gratification or satisfaction is obtained even without sexual intercourse that is sexual intercourse sharao orgasm can be achieved sexual gratification can be obtained that is the most important criteria for the definition of sexual perversion or sexual deviation next coming to the term paraphilia it is a combination of two words of greek origin one is para means beside and philos means love or friendship this term was coined by frederick salmon cross in the year 1903 it was introduced in the diagnostic and statistical manual for mental disorder version 3 and onwards replacing the term sexual deviations or sexual perversions so the paraphilia is the recent term and the old term was sexual deviation or sexual perversion as per dsm 4 tier the essential features of a paraphilia to diagnose the case as a paraphilia what are the essential features of paraphilia or you can call it also a definition of paraphilia as per dsm 4 tier bolche number one criteria is the recurrent and intense sexually arousing fantasies sexual urges or behavior again repeating recurrent and intense sexually arousing urges fantasies or behavior involving involving what involving number one non human objects jade kono pran nei can be anything 
or the suffering or humiliation of oneself or one sexual partner মানে হিউমিলিয়েটিং ওয়ান সেলফ নিজেকে করে অথবা ওয়ান সেক্সুয়াল পার্টনারকে হিউমিলিয়েট করে টর্চার করে অর ইনভলভিং চিলড্রেন অর আদার নন কনসেন্টিং পারসনস তাহলে এসেনশিয়াল ফিচার অফ প্যারাফিলিয়া ইজ দ্যাট রেকারেন্ট অ্যান্ড ইন্টেন্স সেক্সুয়ালি অ্যারাউজিং আরজেস ফ্যান্টাসিস অ্যান্ড বিহেভিয়ার ইনভলভিং নন হিউম্যান অবজেক্ট ইনভলভিং দ্য সাফারিং অর হিউমিলিয়েশন অফ ওয়ান সেলফ অর ওয়ান সেলফ on sexual partner and or involving children or a child or other non consenting subject and to diagnose the case as a paraphilia the symptoms should persist over a period of at least 6 month the symptoms should persist at least over a period of 6 month right tar pore tokhoni ami bolte parbo this is a case of paraphilia as per DSM fourth tier version. Now in DSM five, the concept of paraphilia is little bit changed. There is an introduction of paraphilic disorder and clear cut distinction between what do you mean by paraphilia and what do you mean by paraphilic disorders. তাহলে প্যারাফিলিয়া প্যারাফিলিক ডিসঅর্ডার্স এর মধ্যে পার্থক্য কি হলো ডিএসএম 5 ডিফাইন্স প্যারাফিলিয়া অ্যাজ দা সেম অ্যাজ আ আরজেস ফ্যান্টাসিস অর বিহেভিয়ার যেটা আগে বললাম বাট দা এসেনশিয়াল পার্ট ইজ দ্যাট দিস আরজেস ফ্যান্টাসি অর বিহেভিয়ার ডু নট রিকোয়ার এনি সাইকিয়াট্রিক ট্রিটমেন্ট ইট ক্যান বি প্রেজেন্ট ইন ওয়ান সেলফ কারোর মধ্যে এটা থাকতেই পারে বাট these arges fantasies or behavior do not require any psychiatric treatment as it is not harmful the like paraphilic disorders kokhon asche mane when the paraphilia becomes a paraphilic disorder so when these recurrent arges fantasies and behavior causes significant distress or impairment to the individual in different areas of functioning like social occupational personal then ekhan impairment hocche causing significant distress or impairment of different important areas of functioning of an individual or when a paraphilia whose satisfaction has entailed personal harm or risk of harm to others যখন সেটার সম্ভাবনা থাকছে নিজের কোন ক্ষতি হওয়ার অথবা অন্যকে ক্ষতি করার দেন দ্য প্যারাফিলিয়া বিকামস আ প্যারাফিলিক ডিসঅর্ডার অ্যান্ড অ্যাট দ্যাট মোমেন্ট ইট রিকোয়ার্স অ্যান সাইকিয়াট্রিক ট্রিটমেন্ট আদারওয়াইজ প্যারাফিলিয়া অন ইটস ওন হোয়েন ইট ইজ ইনভলভ ওনলি দ্য আর্জেস ফ্যান্টাসিস অর বিহেভিয়ার অ্যান্ড ইট ইজ রেস্ট্রিক্টেড টু দ্যাট অ্যামাউন্ট ইট ডাজ নট রিকোয়ার এনি সাইকিয়াট্রিক ট্রিটমেন্ট বাট হোয়েন ইট কজ এ সিগনিফিকেন্ট ডিস্ট্রেস ইজ ইন অ্যান ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল and can cause and self harm or harm to others then psychiatric treatment is required or essential and then at that moment that paraphilia becomes an paraphilic disorder this is a view of dsm 5 on paraphilia so what are the classical examples of paraphilias as per dsm 4 so one is pedophilia next is transvestic fetishism followed by exhib exhibitionism fetishism voyeurism we have already discussed what is voyeurism in the part sex linked offenses but actually voyeurism is an paraphilia but as per the indian law it comes under the sex linked offenses sexual masochism sexual sadism frotteurism and paraphilia not otherwise specified these are the example of paraphilias under dsm 4 tier so coming to the first paraphilia that is pedophilia
what is pedophilia a definition to ektu mone rakhar chesta koro porikkhay jiggesh kore it is defined as it is also a paraphilia so recurrent intense sexually arousing urges fantasies or behavior involving sexual activity with a prepubescent child or children less than 13 years of age by a person who is 16 years or above and at least 5 years older than the child abar bolchi recurrent and intense sexually arousing urges fantasies and behavior involving sexual activity with a prepubescent child or a children less than 13 years of age tale boyosh koto hote hobe bachcha tar less than 13 years of age ke korbe by a person who is at least 16 years or above or at least 5 years older than the child that means sexual activity by a 14 year boy with a 13 year girl you cannot stamp the 14 year boy as an pedophile there should be age gap of minimum 5 years between the victim and the pedophile clear so the age of the children should be 13 years less than 13 years by a person who is at least 16 years or above or in other criteria at least 5 years older than the child this is the definition of pedophilia there are few terminologies like gynephilia that is sexual interest in adult women androphilia sexual interest in adult males these are not pedophilia but there are few nomenclatures i like to share nepiophilia or infantophilia where the sexual arousal by infants of opposite sex it is known as infantophilia and lastly hebephilia or epiphilia or popularly known as lolita syndrome where there is a preference for the pubescent children between 11 to 14 years for females and 11 to 16 years for males and this is named based on the famous novel lolita written by famous novelist vladimir nobokov and he was a russian novelist in the year 1955 where a professor was obsessed with a 12 year old girl dolores hayes whose nickname was lolita you can read that novel the so from that novel the term came as a lolita syndrome or hebephilia preference for pubescent children 11 to 14 years for female and 11 to 16 years for male What are the biological findings you detected on several studies on the pedophiles? It was seen that there was a lower baseline of plasma cortisol and prolactin concentration with an evidence of higher body temperatures on the pedophile. It is also seen that there was exaggerated response to pharmacological provocation of serum cortisol and epinephrine with MCPP that is meta chlorphenyl piperazine exaggerated response were detected and also there was evidence of decreased presynaptic serotonergic activity followed by compensatory upregulation of postsynaptic 5-HT 2A2C receptors and lastly there was hypothalamic pituitary gonadal dysfunction with more sensitivity towards hypothalamic gonadotrophin releasing hormone and sometimes in cases of frontotemporal dementia bilateral hippocampal sclerosis it was connected with pedophilia though it is you cannot say that these are the causes of pedophilia but these findings were detected in different on several studies on the pedophiles right moving to the next paraphilia that is transvestic fetishism also known as eonism as per the definition is concerned it is a recurrent and intense sexually arousing fantasies urges or behavior where sexual gratification 
is obtained by wearing the dress of opposite sex. Sexual gratification is obtained by wearing the dress of opposite sex and obviously to fulfill the criteria of paraphilia, the symptoms should last at least more than six months for its diagnosis. But you should never be confused between transsexuals and transvestic fetishism. Transsexuals wear the dress of the opposite sex because they feel themselves as the part of the opposite sex. But they do not wear the dress of opposite sex for sexual gratification, right? But the transvestic fetishism where the sufferer dresses himself with a dress of the opposite sex to achieve sexual gratification. So sexual gratification is never an essential criteria for the transsexual individuals where sexual gratification by wearing the dress of the opposite sex is an integral and important and the most criteria for the, for the sufferer suffering from transvestic fetishism. And boys, it is mostly seen in males. There is also a term known as cisvestism where the sexual gratification is obtained by dressing up in clothes of one's own sex but this dress is inappropriate to the individual's position or status. For example, you are seeing your professor coming in formal shirt and pant regularly the, uh, to the college and suddenly in the fine morning when you are coming for the morning class, you see that professor wearing a biker's leather with a cow uh, well, with a hat and a cowboy's typical dress. So this is inappropriate to the position of that particular professor. He has dressed himself with the dress of the same sex. But that is inappropriate to the position or the status of that person holding a particular position. This is known as cisvestism. So transvestic fetishism where gratification is obtained by wearing the dress of opposite sex. And this paraphilia that is transvestic fetishism is considered the third most common paraphilia after sadomasochism and exhibitionism. Etiology attributed to transvestic fetishisms are post-encephalitic state, temporal lobe lesions, or may be detected after treatment started with telegenin. There is another nomenclature known as infantilism or adult baby syndrome. What is that adult baby syndrome? Here, the person or the sufferer obtain sexual gratification by acting or dressing or being treated as an infant by one's own sexual partner. Gratification is obtained either by acting or dressing or being treated as an infant by one's own sexual partner. Behaviors involved like drinking from feeding bottle, wearing diapers are like that shown in this picture. So adult baby syndrome, acting, dressing or behaving like an infant or being treated as an infant by one's own sexual partner. Next moving to the next paraphilic, uh, paraphilia that is fetishism, only fetishism, not transvestic fetishism. So what is fetishism? So as per DSM-4, fetishism is defined as over a period of last six months, recurrent or intense sexually arousing urges, fantasies or behavior involving what? Involving the use of non-living object. Involving the use of non-living object. For example, fantasies over female undergarment or arousal by thinking or using an inanimate object or arousal by thinking only a part of the body that is not prominently sexual in nature. For example, Foot fetishism. 
the food is not generally sexual in nature but the sufferer is getting gratification by thinking of the food of a particular sex of an individual so involving the use of non living object or arousal by thinking or using an inanimate object or any part of the body which is not prominently non sexual in nature right this is known as fetishism here the fantasies urges and behavior causes clinically significant distress or impairment of social occupational or important areas of functioning then it will become a paraphilic disorder and requires a treatment otherwise on considering a it does not require any treatment itself now this fetish object can be anything it is not only limited to the articles of female clothing used for cross dressing as seen in cases of transvestic fetishism or device uh, devices designed for purpose of tactile genital stimulation like vibrator it can be anything any object for example handkerchief brassiere panties foot any part of the body of any subject shoes so this is known as fetishism as per dsm 4 So this is foot fetish, or you can call this a shoe fetish. Anything. Next, coming to the next paraphilia, that is exhibitionism. Here, sexual gratification is obtained by exposing or manipulating genitalia in a public place, mostly in front of an unsuspecting stranger. which is more commonly involving children or females so gratification is obtained by exposing or manipulating genitalia in public place mostly in front of unsuspecting stranger involving children or females it may or may not accompanied by masturbation this is second most common paraphilia after sadomasochism and boys again it is commonly seen in males and those persons suffering from exhibitionism they are called flashers as they are flashing their external genitalia in a public place it is punishable under section 294 ipc with an imprisonment of 3 months with or without fine and also under section 290 ipc for creating public nuisance etiology attributed to exhibitionisms are it is commonly seen in cases of alcoholism in a patient of epilepsy patient suffering from obsessive compulsive disorders or gpi senile dementia and psychopathic personality disorder biological abnormality involved excess monoamines especially the dopamines as seen in person treated for parkinsonism with carbidopa or levodopa which is a precursor of dopamine you know or with pargolite which is a dopamine agonist so associated with excess monoamines especially the dopamine exhibitionism flashers next paraphilia we will discuss is touchurism or frotturism this is for the female students you may have personally experienced it in a crowded space or have heard of other females experienced in a crowded place what is that frotturism frotturism refers to rubbing one's body especially the private parts against a non consenting person 
so rubbing one's body especially the private parts against a non consenting person is known as frotteurism or toucherism where the term frotter means to rub this behavior usually occurs in a crowded place as in malls elevators public transportation vehicles like a crowded bus or trains or in public festivals where the sufferer takes the advantage of the crowd and rubs his private parts against the body parts of another non consenting person it is also commonly seen in cases of males তাহলে এখন অবধি যা দেখা যাচ্ছে এই প্যারাফিলিয়া গুলো মেলস এর মধ্যেই বেশি তাই তো ইট ইজ অলসো পানিশেবল আন্ডার সেকশন টু নাইনটি আইপিসি উইথ আ ফাইন অফ রুপিস টু হান্ড্রেড অ্যান্ড মেবি ইম্প্রিজনমেন্ট মেবি দেয়ার সো দিস ইজ ফ্রটিউরিজম রাবিং দ্য প্রাইভেট পার্স এগেনস্ট দ্য যেখানে যদিও ছবিতে দেখা যাচ্ছে পুরো বাসটা ফাঁকা বাট দ্য ইনসিডেন্ট ইজ সাচ দ্যাট ঠিক আছে সো দিস ইজ কলড ফ্রটিউরিজম next moving towards the dangerous paraphilia sexual paraphilia and the first one we are going to discuss about the sexual sadism ekhono obdi joto tuku discuss korechilam apart from pedophilia khub ekta khoti korchilo na now we are coming to the dangerous paraphilia that is known as sexual sadism here the sufferer derives sexual excitement or gratification from inflicting pain and that pain can be a psychological or mental or physical or both karo pore on his sexual partner abar bolchi the person or the sufferer achieves sexual gratification by inflicting pain on the body of his sexual partner on the on the sexual partner and the pain could be either psychological or physical or can be both types bojha gelo so gratification is obtained by inflicting pain on the sexual partner either in the form of psychological pain or physical pain or both the term sexual sadism has derived from the name of the french nobleman marquis de sade who was infamous for his crimes and writings and many of his writings were about sexuality cruelty and torture and above all he regarded those sexual deviant act as completely natural and not abnormal so the term sexual sadism is coming from marquis de sade his life consisted of numerous acts of extremely violent physical and sexual abuses and most of the victims of marquis de sade were female prostitutes and male and female employees of his estate portrait of marquis de sade dekho dekhei ki rokom ekta bhoyanok bhoyanok mone hocche na mukh ta so marquis de sade theke term sadism esche beshi kon nata kie thakai bhalo The dangerous part is that to obtain sexual gratification the sadist may bite beat whip produce cuts or ill treats and torture his sexual partner and in extreme form the victim's nipple may be bitten off articles such as bottle candles or sticks are inserted into the vagina or anus cigarettes may be used to burn the skin or blows may be given which may rupture internal organ and causes fracture of the bones and even in the last stage or the extreme form murder may be committed and that murder is known as lust murder that is the extreme form of sadist practice onek kichu korte pare mane nijer gratification er jonno sexual gratification er jonno partner ke marte pare physically pain inflict korte pare violent porjay chole jete pare eto tai je ekhane shekhane last porjonto je ta sexual partner ke kill kore mere at its gratification so what is last murder 
it is the consequence of extreme form of sadist practice last murder is the consequence of extreme form of sadist practice and obviously it is an homicide in which the offender either stabs pierces slashes or otherwise mutilates the sexual organs or areas of the victim's body it starts with torturing the partner for sexual arousal or otherwise the sexual arousal starts by torturing the sexual partner and complete gratification is obtained with the death of that partner this is important for last murder so sexual arousal begins by torturing the partner and gratification is obtained after the death of that partner mutilation may include evisceration of genitalia there are several case reports on last murder you can search over internet and get, de uh, get details of that incidents what happened in that particular case it is seen that after murder the sadist may have sexual intercourse with the partner that is known as necrophilia or may suck lick the wounds or even eat the flesh of the victim in the form of necrophagia so sometimes last murder may be associated with necrophilia as well as necrophagia I'm showing few uh, pictures on the case reports of last murder with mutilation of the body parts you can see the breast were removed external genitalia was also mutilated Now coming to the brain abnormalities detected in sadist. ওখানে কত সুন্দর এরা study করে দেখো। The brain abnormalities detected a person suffering from sexual sadism are number one pathological changes in the cortical subcortical interactions in the temporal lobes. The sadist showed greater desynchronization of eg rhythms involving theta alpha and beta in the central and frontal region of the right cerebral hemisphere so desynchronization of the eg rhythm in central and frontal region of right cerebral hemisphere endocrinal abnormality detected in cases of sadism are elevated level of dehydroepiandosterone sulfate in a sexually aggressive individual this dhes dehydroepiandosterone sulfate is positively correlated with sadist or sexually aggressive individuals and in some cases it is seen that prolactin was generally lower side and cortisol is higher side in sexually aggressive individuals Jeffrey Dahmer American serial killer also infamously known as the Milwaukee cannibal or Milwaukee monster he is a repeated sex offender and committed murder and dismemberment of at least 17 men and boys between the year 1978 and 1991 and it is also reported that his acts of sexual sadism were associated with last murder involving also necrophilia and in few cases cannibalism jeffrey tamer known as milwaukee monster সতেরো জন লোককে মেরে ফেলেছিল
next coming to sexual masochism just opposite to sexual sadism sexual masochism what is that here as i am saying just opposite to sexual sadism the sufferer achieves sexual gratification arousal or even orgasm after having pain inflicted upon oneself or experiencing embarrassment or humiliation by one sexual partner or being controlled through bondage regulations and commands so sexual gratification or even orgasms are achieved by receiving pain on oneself but nijeke nijer opore pain inflict kore anondo pacche or experiencing self embarrassment or humiliation by one sexual partner or being controlled through bondage regulations and commands just opposite to sexual masochism the term masochism is derived from leopold ritter von masoch who was an austrian novelist it is said that he being whipped by his wife used to be stimulated for his literary work তাহলে বউ এর কাছ থেকে যতক্ষণ না চাবুক দিয়ে মার খেত ততক্ষণ পর্যন্ত তিনি ভালো লেখা লিখতে পারতেন না সো ফ্রম দা অস্ট্রিয়ান নোভেলিস লিওপল্ড ভন ম্যাসক দা টার্ম ম্যাসোচিজম ইজ ডিভাইড সামটাইমস ম্যাসোচিস্টিক অ্যাসফিকশিয়াল ডেথ মে অকার ডিউ টু অ্যাক্সিডেন্টাল হ্যাঙ্গিং অর স্ট্রাঙ্গুলেশন ইট ইজ মেনশনড ইন বুকস বাট আই ডোন্ট ফুললি এগ্রি উইথ দ্যাট Uh, asphyxial self asphyxial death or autoerotic asphyxial death can be a part associated with masochistic practice it is a self employed method for getting sexual gratification not always that it, uh, it should be associated by receiving pain from the sexual partner so leopold von masoch ওই মার্কুইস ডি সাডি কে যতটা ভয়ানক দেখতে ছিল দেখো এর কিন্তু তার অপোজিটি অটোইরোটিক অ্যাসফিকশিয়াল ডেথ বাট দিস নট অলওয়েজ অ্যাসোসিয়েটেড উইথ ম্যাসোচিস্টিক প্র্যাকটিস নাও please remember that sadism and masochism are rarely found in a pure state mane ki ekdom i puro sadism royeche ba ekdom puro masochism royeche rather it is found in a combination where one type is dominant over other and this combination is known as bondage tale age bhabo to je suffering from sadism sa sadism i royeche ba je suffering from masochism the completely suffering from masochism royeche but current view is that the sadism and masochism remains in a combination where one part is dominant over the other algolagnia is the term used for both sadism and masochism psychologists now view masochism as a part of large cluster of human aberrant sexual behavior which is popularly known as BDSM that stands for bondage discipline sexual sadism and sexual masochism so masochism or sexual sadism comes under a cluster of human aberrant sexual behavior popularly termed as BDSM bondage discipline sadism and masochism now this bdsm has subgroups what are the subgroups the subgroups of bdsm is that bd ds and sm the subgroups of bdsm are bd that stands for bondage and discipline ds that is domination and submission 
and SM that stands for sadism and masochism. So BDSM with the subgroup BD, DS and SM. The term bondage refers to restraining people. During the sexual act. Discipline refers to some form of erotic punishment often involving mild caning or spanking during the sexual act. So bondage either restraining people and discipline refers to erotic form of punishment like caning or spanking. Dominance you know that the I am the person in charge of that particular position. So being in charge, I mean dominant for the act, the dominance. Another partner, let someone else be in the charge. Submission refers to letting someone else to be in the charge, just opposite to dominance. And you know what is sadism and masochism is. So BD, DS and SM. Please remember that in the part BD, that is bondage and discipline and dominance and submission also to certain extent, there is use of power play for sexual pleasure but not for inflicting pain to severe extent. There is a power play for sexual pleasure only. But in sadomasochism, pain is used for sexual gratification. And that pain can be of severe extent. So the basic difference from BD from SM is that in BD there is no infliction of pain of certain extent or severity. It is only used for sexual pleasure or as a power play. Where sadomasochism pain is the important integral part either received on oneself or giving to the one sexual partner for getting gratification or receiving gratification. Etiology of masochism, it's mentioned in textbook that monoamine, especially the dopamine, seems to have a strong association with masochism. Monoamine, apart from dopamine, non-epinephrine and serotonin are also positively attributed to the cause of masochism as it they are released during the stressful or painful acts produces a pleasurable experience that is known as pleasurable rush. So monoamines are released during stressful or painful experiences and they can cause a pleasurable rush and for that the person is ready to get a pain on one's own self for that pleasurable rush because of the secretions of the Monoamines. Release of endorphins that can also cause a people is addicted to self-harm in a case of masochism. So release of endorphins. This is all about masochism or sexual masochism. Sadism use koro. examiner jodi Cotton cotton question called a takebola sadist like that. But here the term sadism is associated with sexual sadism. Now coming to the a broad category that is known as paraphilia, not otherwise specified, as mentioned in DSM 4. Paraphilia, not otherwise specified. It takes a particular group in Monte Fala that chilona. I know DSM 4 take a mention called paraphilia not otherwise specified. But the term changed to other specified paraphilic disorder in DSM 4. The DSM sorry DSM 5. The DSM 4 is a paraphilia not otherwise specified chilo converted it into other specified paraphilic disorder in DSM 5. Okay. 
the classical examples of paraphilia not otherwise specified or other specified paraphilic disorder includes urophilia or urolagnia, coprophilia, telephone scatologia, paternalism, zoophilia, clismophilia, even necrophilia. So something related with masturbation or also known as onanism. But the most important thing to me is that it is not a paraphilia included in DSM. Rather, it is you cannot call it a paraphilia. It only exists as a sexual perversion in few forensic textbooks. Jokes hmm. apart. So, masturbation is not a paraphilic uh, paraphilia until it causes significant distress or impairment in individual's life, causing impairment of different areas of performing functioning when the person gets addicted to it. So, masturbation near detail kichu bolat dorkan ne kauke. So, deliberate self stimulation commonly seen in both men and women. Ishan ka term unanism use kora hoye se. In biblical times, under Jewish law, it was known that a brother was required to procreate with his brother's window. If you have a brother, you can see that you have a brother, you can see that you have a brother, you can see that you have a brother. The owner of Judah refused and ejaculated on the ground instead. Ejaculated on the ground itself, that is called the sin of Onan, which is incorrectly used in place of masturbation. Next, coming to Europhilia. Eurolagnia or Andinism. What is that? Eurolagnia or Europhilia is a paraphilic, other specified paraphilic disorder where sexual excitement is associated with sight, smell, or thought of urine or urination. What is that? Eurolagnia or Europhilia. Sexual excitement associated with sight, smell, or thought of urine or urination. There is another term, andinism. Andinism ta ki jinish? Sexual pleasure is obtained by witnessing the act of urination by someone or of the same sex or the opposite sex. So, sexual pleasure is obtained by witnessing the act of urination by someone either of same sex or of opposite sex or sexual pleasure is obtained by urinating on another person or being urinated upon known as golden showers. Andinism gratification is obtained being urinated upon or urinating on the body of another person. Similarly like urophilia there is coprophilia or coprolagnia where sexual excitement is associated with sight, smell or thought of feces or defecation. Rather is shift kori. Telephone scatologia, where the obscene telephone calls are made usually by heterosexual males who call known or unknown females to carry out sexually provocative conversations, known as telephone scatologia. Coprolalia. Coprolalia is involuntary swearing or utterance of obscene words or socially inappropriate and derogatory remarks. Involuntary swearing. This is not voluntary swearing. Coprolalia is involuntary swearing or utterance of obscene words 
or socially inappropriate and derogatory remarks. Pygmalionism. Pygmalionism means falling in love with an object made by himself or herself or sexual attraction towards a statue. So, falling in love with an object made by him or her or falling in love with a statue known as Pygmalionism. Narcissism, excessive self-love, which may or may not include genital stimulation. So, this is Pygmalionism, falling in love with a statue or falling in love with an object made by him. Narcissism. Partialism. Partialism, the sexual interest exclusively focused on a particular part of the body. It is again a separate entity, chilo, but it is now subsumed in fetishistic disorder in DSM-5. DSM-4 is another entity chilo, where the sexual interest exclusively focused on a particular part of the body, but now it is subsumed in fetishistic disorder. Clismophilia, sexual activity involving giving enemas or taking enemas or both. So, we have a disorder, giving enema or receiving enema or both. Uranism, sexual gratification is obtained by fingering, fondling, licking, sucking the genitalia of the same sex. Practice of homosexuality between males, the term is uranism, but it is not a... Uh, paraphilia in its own course, right? The term to just tell me to share Korea club uranism. So, partialism, sexual attraction towards a particular part of the body. Jabon ekhetre, chali diye ki dekhte hoche, prochur pa dekhte hoche. A khub kushi lokta. Clismophilia. Attraction, sexual gratification is obtained either by receiving or giving enemas. Necrophilia, here is the desire or actual act to perform sexual intercourse with dead bodies. Which Milwaukee monster bullets, Jeffrey Dahmer, he was a classical example suffering from necrophilia. It is generally committed on a newly buried corpse or a dead body awaiting burial. Either person, either that is suffering from necrophilia, kon kon dead body ko loke select kore. Jigula shadda shadda kabod deva hoye chhe, jate kabod khule ta ata ni thola shombo decomposition start hoye ni. Othoba jigulo ke burial er jonno ba disposal er jonno wait kochche. একটা খুব ভালো বাংলা সিনেমা বেরিয়েছিল নামটা মনে নেই সুস্মিতা সেন ছিল সেখানেও এই নেক্রোফিলিয়াটা দেখানো হয়েছিল আর নেক্রোফেজিয়া এক্সট্রিম ডিগ্রি অফ স্যাডিজম হোয়ার দা পারসন আফটার মিউটিলেটিং দা ডেড বডি মে সাক অর লিক দা উন্ডস বাইটস দা স্কিন অর ড্রিঙ্কস দা ব্লাড অর ইট দা ফ্লেশ অফ দা ভিকটিম ফর সেক্সুয়াল গ্র্যাটিফিকেশন এক্সট্রিম ফর্ম অফ সেক্সুয়াল স্যাডিজম as a part of last murder, necrophilia and necrophagia. So these are my references again, photographs from internet for solely academic purpose. That's all for today's class and class on sexual offenses. Bhalo kore poro. Jodi kuna question thake, you can ask me always. Bhalo kore pujo kata. 
wish you a happy durga puja in advance thank you and take care